Oh boy. Ruby Volume 8 is just around the corner, and of course, there's something I would love to see happen, or at least just get addressed in this volume. So here we go, my list of things I hope for for Volume 8. Based on Penny's behavior, I'm going to guess she's not thrilled with the events that transpired. It would be a fascinating direction for Penny if she resented becoming a maiden, especially since Cinder adores being a maiden so much. It could become a fun duality between them. You keep wishing for some Winter was supposed to be the Schnee heiress. She lost that. Next, she was supposed to be the Winter Maiden. She's lost that too. Don't you think she might have some underlying jealousy and resentment over these events? Come on, let's get some actual character development for her up in here, huh? <laughs> You're holding up for some now that Clover's dead, the Aesops are going to need a new leader. And let's be honest, none of these schmucks really have leader material. If Winter filled that role, she could use the Aesops like her lackeys or something. That could be fun. James will take the fall. I'll make sure of it. Oh, those sound like fighting words. I feel like Volume 8 could be a very big turning point for Crow's character, in tearing down the walls of his prior relationships and start giving him some new development. A fight between these two have been a long time coming. Similarly, I think Crow and Mama Schnee could offer some interesting development with each other. A recovering alcoholic to give Willow a wake-up call about her shaky relationships with her children, and a mother full of regrets and hindsight to give Crow some retrospection. I think the two could develop in a big way if they spend a little more time together. Not like a ship, though. I still haven't recovered from- <laughs> I'm not sure if these two have room to keep popping up in the show, or if they'll even be coming back at all, but if the Schnees do come back in the show, I hope they can develop in a way that'll actually have an impact on the plot. Or, even better, Weiss's character development. Weiss has had a lot of character progression happen alongside her relationship with both Winter and her dad, and I do think the rest of her family could help her continue to grow. But I also don't think they're necessary for it. Willow and Whitley are really underdeveloped, so giving them some real character would be great if this is the direction they want to go with this. Not Robin. For God's sake, not Robin. But May, Fiona, and Joanna, they seem cool. I think they could be a lot of fun. Cuties, the whole lot of them. The opening doesn't need to be a two minute long crappy song over shots that resemble all of the first three episodes. Shorten that shit. If you could only open up the door. I get it, they're best friends and whatever, blah 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 blah. Can they please talk to literally any other characters, Yang especially? She barely talks to Weiss or Ruby, let alone anyone not in their team. And it's not just spending time with the others I want, I would love to see some real meaningful dialogue between the characters. Stop just limiting Yang and Blake's character growth to each other. Just tell us what's happening with the girls already. Stop pussyfooting around the topic and have them tell us what's happening in the show. Not in some tweet or in a Q&A or whatever the fuck. The show. Are they romantically interested in each other? Cool. Let them say that. Are they just really close friends? Also cool, but just have them fucking say that. Even the characters in universe don't know what the hell is going on between them. At least they're back to being friends. Friends, huh? Yes, friends. Stop just having the two give each other sassy looks all the time and actually address what their relationship is supposed to be. This is a more personal thought, but I'm super bored with how Yang styles her hair. I don't expect her to cut it or anything, but changing up the style she has would be nice. Do her bangs differently or something, I don't know. Do something with these like swooping parts on her side. They never look right anyway. <laughs> After being the most vocal about being mad at Oz for his lies and half-truths, Yang and Blake go behind everyone's backs and tells Robin about the tower, leading to Ironwood's breaking point about not trusting Team Ruby anymore. I would love it if the others got mad at Blake and Yang for going behind everyone's back in this, and their glowing hypocrisy. Inner conflict with our heroes could offer some really interesting character development, and this would be an easy way to set this up. Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Yang, Jean, Ren, Nora, Crow, Penny, Oscar, and now Ozpin too. That's already 11 characters we're following for the story. There's no room for these two. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Pietro and Maria, I think they're fun, but our main cast is overcrowded as it is. And it's not like these two could be of much use anyway. They're both too old for combat, and they both have disabilities. 
Pietro might help when it comes to, like, technology and stuff, but Maria has run her course. She's told Ruby everything she knows about Silver Eyes, which wasn't even a whole lot to begin with. <laughs> and there's nothing left for her to do. Ditch the dead weight and trim our gigantic main cast, please. Oscar's in the perfect position to get some screen time just for himself. He's been woefully underdeveloped ever since his introduction in Volume 4, and it's mostly because he has to share his screen with everyone else. Again, all those 11 plus characters we have already. <laughs> Whether it's Ozpin taking control to give the kids backstory, or sitting in the sidelines while the real fighters take center stage, Oscar never gets to do anything. Now that he's finally on his own, an Oscar-centered solo adventure might be a great way to let him finally shine. <laughs> Is, like, something gonna happen with these guys, or...? Neo transformed into Nora and was able to trick Oscar and psych out Ren. I would love it if she got to do more things like this. Really, like, trick the audience into not knowing who's the real one. Now that I know Neo could do things like this with her semblance, I want to see them play around with this a lot more. They've got the relic now. Wouldn't it be crazy if the last question was asked by our villains? There's a bunch of things that could ask that would give them an edge against our heroes. Where's the Summer Maiden? Where's Ozpin? Where's the Beacon Relic? Speaking of Jin, she's been shown to be a great resource for showing us character backstories. And I'm dying to learn about these two edgelords. <laughs> Whether we get this information through Jin or not, I would love it if we just got some deeper insight into two of our main antagonists. Their characters are so bland or underdeveloped, Anything would be appreciated at this point. While we're on the topic of backstories, let's talk about Nora. She's the only member of our main cast who hasn't had their childhood explained to us. How did she get to Kurayuri? What happened to her parents? Please give Nora more love in the show. Okay, now hear me out. I love Renora, they're cute and sweet, and I love them. But I'm also noticing some interesting directions for their characters to go. Red and Nora have been arguing a lot since Volume 7, and if the two did end up breaking up, it could be a pretty interesting direction for them. Red and Nora have always had the relationship be the center point of their characters. Way back in Volume 1, Nora's obviously been crushing on Ren, and their powerful friendship is a huge element for both of them. But if they broke up, then suddenly the two could develop in a ton of completely new directions. And they might still come back together again later, now with a greater understanding of who they really are, despite what their friendship means as the center point of their characters. But don't worry, I do expect to get crucified on the internet for this one. We got a tease to us in the opening for Volume 7, and it was a big talking point in the Volume 2. This time around, I would love it if we actually got to see it in all its glory. Or at the very least, have its abilities and limits explained to us. Things are looking pretty shitty for Atlas right now. If Atlas falls, it would shake up the world of Remnant in a crazy way. And what about the casualties? Everyone on Atlas and Mantle would be in grave danger. I don't know how else we could continue our story while in Atlas without something majorly catastrophic like this happening. This is a part of a little theory I have. I've noticed a trend of our headmasters dying, and I expect Ironwood to follow this trend. If Salem found him, I can see no reason why she would want to keep him around, and his death would probably leave the biggest impact since Pyrrha's. We've known Ironwood since Volume 2. He stood up for Weiss. He's doing everything he can to save the people. A little misguided, but you know, he's trying. <laughs> it would be a really big blow if his biggest fears came true. We've been finally getting more Summer mentioned in the show. Just a couple of things here and there, but it's really fun. Ruby doesn't seem to want to talk about her mom very often. So now that she's starting to bring her up, that might mean Ruby's on her way to some really big character development. And with Salem's taunting during Volume 7's finale, I'm hoping we'll learn more about Summer, and I'm hoping it'll have a big impact on the plot. Or at the very least, a big impact on developing Ruby's character. And that's everything I have on my list! And just like last year, it's all because it's gonna go on a bingo board! 
That's right, I'm bringing back my bingo board. I'm gonna go through this volume to see if I can make a bingo out of all the things I'm hoping for. But of course, I want you to play along too. In the description, I have a link to my bingo board and also a link to a blank bingo board. You can rearrange what I have or you can fill in the blanks and make your own thing. Go ahead and tweet at me. I'll have my, this is my Twitter, it's on screen. I'll also have a link in the description. Go ahead and at me your bingo boards and let's play volume eight bingo together. Okie dokie, I really hope you like this video and I hope you're jazzed about bingo. Uh, quick shout out to my $10 patrons, you're all awesome. Cool Duck, Ramiel, Andrew, James Dodds, Chamomile, Valhalla Knight, Michael, Nako. Thank you all so much, you're all so awesome. I'm excited for volume eight, it's just around the corner. I'm super, I'm super excited, I cannot wait. Uh, I hope, I hope you're excited too. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing my weekly reviews again. I'm gonna try to keep up with it. Don't worry, no spoilers in the thumbnails. <laughs> I would never do something like that. And uh, yeah, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. What do you expect to happen in the volume? Do you disagree with me on anything? What are your theories that you have? And all thoughts and opinions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.